So I'm one of those types of people who tries to do a hundred things at once and I'm constantly trying to set like 20 goals for myself at a time and I frequently have to rein myself in and say no you need to focus on five or less goals at a time otherwise I get nothing done. I make progress on none of those hundreds of projects or 20 goals that I'm trying to accomplish at a time. So. Whether you're like me, where you're always trying to do so many things at once, or you don't really know where to get started and you don't know where to prioritize your time and where to focus your energy on for your store, I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for how to set goals for your store, how to actually make those goals happen, and I'm also going to provide some recommendations on different types of goals you can set for yourself in 2021. for 2021 is really to find balance. Like I said, I'm always trying to do so much of the time and I'm always trying to cram so much into a day. And what happens a lot of the time is I will be working like four to five days out of the week, just go, 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 constant. And then by that fourth or fifth day, I just completely crash and burn and I face serious burnout and it takes me a very long time to recover and the whole time I'm just feeling so guilty that I'm not doing more. So one thing that I'm personally going to incorporate more of into my own life is balance. Finding time where I will focus my energy on certain tasks for my stores or my businesses, but also time for myself and time to relax and let myself recharge so I have energy to go back to getting things done the next day or the next week. So I recommend not only setting goals for your store and your business, but also for yourself. You want to think about setting business goals, but also setting personal goals. And sometimes they kind of will overlap. But regardless, I think it's important to think about both categories and don't only focus on your business because your mental health and your physical health and your family and your loved ones are so important as well. And sometimes as small business owners, we get caught up in the hustle and bustle of things and we forget to prioritize ourselves. So make sure that regardless of what goals you're about to set, you're thinking about some for yourself and your family as well. So my next recommendation is to think about how you're going to prioritize your goals and how you're going to actually accomplish them. So what I recommend is to set a maximum of five goals at a time because anything more than that will be hard to focus your energy on and actually accomplish. So what I recommend is to pick one goal as your primary goal, your focus goal, your main goal. And this is going to be the goal that you dedicate the most time to. I recommend spending about an hour to an hour and a half on this goal at least five days a week. And from there, you can rest assured that after six months, you will have made so much progress on that goal because you dedicate so much time to it. You might not even need a six month period to master this goal. If you're spending that much time on the goal, you could probably get it done within a month or three months. It just depends on what the goal is and how big it is. So after that, then you wanna pick three to four other goals to focus on. And these are going to be goals that you work on weekly, but you're not necessarily going to ded dedicate quite as much time on them because let's face it, we just don't have as much time in the day as we wish we did. So like I said, you wanna make sure, like I am personally, trying to find balance. And for me, that means the more I put on my plate, the less I get done. So if you just pick three to four other goals and find a routine that allows you to work on them weekly, maybe it's 10 minutes a day on each, Maybe it's an hour a week on each, depends on how you can set it up and what the type of goal it is. You'll also be confident 
that within six months, you will have made progress on each because you have found a way to dedicate time to each of these goals. And that's going to be better off for you in the long run than trying to do all of your goals at once, trying to focus all of your energy on all of them every single day. You're just, it's not going to be something that you can stick to if you approach it like that. So I recommend picking that one main focus goal and then three to four other goals to focus on at a given time. And then once you've completed one of them, of course, that's when you can come back and try to work on the next one. So what I'm gonna do next is share a couple of examples that I wrote down of different types of goals that I think are beneficial for online store owners to dedicate time to or to set as their 2021 goals. And this list is a combination of what's worked for myself in the past, but also what I've talked to other fellow online store owners about and what has made the biggest difference in their own stores. So, one other note is that one of my own goals is to actually make a video topic on almost every single one of these goals that you can set so I can walk you through how to go about them. But for now, let's take a look. So the first goal that I would recommend for some of you is to create or purchase the perfect backdrop to take pictures on, to hold photo shoots on for your store. This can be something that maybe it's going to cost more than you would like to budget, so you need to save up for it. Or it's just going to take time researching on Pinterest, finding the right props or decorations for your backdrop. But if you have that one space that you can always go to to take your pictures, you'll be able to accomplish a lot more photo shoots in the long run. Another goal could be to get more organized with inventory. I think that a lot of us, including myself, can work on this one. But it's important to find a system that works for you. Some of you might want to have a goal of opening a brick and mortar. So if you are online only, but you eventually want to own a storefront, that could be a goal for you. Another goal would be to be more consistent on social media. And this can be across all social media platforms, or you can focus on one platform to focus your attention on like Instagram or Facebook or TikTok. Um, but being more consistent will allow your audience to actually connect with you and allow you to build a more loyal audience. Next I have master Facebook ads. So there is a learning curve when it comes to Facebook advertisements. I know a lot of people will start to just spend money targeting what they think is their target audience and in the long run they've wasted thousands of dollars and failed to make very many sales because they don't really know what they're doing. So one thing you can do is take a class or just do research to understand how to retarget and use your pixel, your lookalike audience, etc. to actually be successful with Facebook ads. Another goal could be increase sales by 20%. Now, of course, you can alter any of the percentages or numbers or time frames that I'm sharing today. You can, of course, alter for your own situation. Another example would be new website design every month. So some of you probably are kind of slow to update your website. You might not update it very often. You might leave it the same design for six months at a time. And if you if you look at any of the big name stores, you can see that they're updating their website weekly. So that can be a new goal to work on. Another goal could be to hire an assistant. You could hire a new model. A goal could be to hold a professional photo shoot. Another goal idea could be to add a new type of product to your store. So this could be, let's say you only sell clothing right now, but you want to eventually add a section for shoes or for handbags or a 
accessories of some sort. That could be a long-term goal. Another goal would be to start a text club. So I know firsthand that a lot of people are successful with text clubs in terms of gaining repeat customers, especially if you offer rewards in that text club. Another goal could be to work on your SEO. Next, I have send out two emails per week to your audience and then bonus points if you get advanced with your email marketing and actually segment your audience list by your VIP customers, your repeat customers, your new buyers, etc. Another goal could be to work on your Pinterest marketing. And let's say you could spend time, 10 minutes a day, working on Pinterest. That could be a small goal. Next, I have grow your Instagram following by 50,000 followers. So of course, like I said, alter those numbers to your own situation. Make three TikTok videos a week. So that could be a big goal for some of you who are afraid of TikTok or just afraid of being on camera or let's say you need to hire a new model who will be your TikTok girl. Another goal could be to read more about marketing. You could read marketing books weekly, you could read marketing books daily, or you could take a course on Marketing 101 just so you have a better feel of how consumers connect with brands. Another goal could be to engage members in your VIP Facebook group daily. Or if you don't have a VIP Facebook group, you could create one. I know that that's been very successful for a lot of other fellow store owners. Another one is similar to TikToks, but to create reels for Instagram. Maybe you don't want to get on TikTok for whatever reason, although I advise against that. You should definitely be on TikTok in 2021 but you could focus more on reels as well. Or you could simply take a sales course or read books about sales. So those are my recommended goals. Of course, there are so many more that you can think of for your own store, for your own situation. I just wanted to share a couple of different examples to help you get started. to what I was saying earlier about prioritizing your goals. Let's say that one of your goals is to become more organized with your inventory in the next three months. Well, that's probably not going to be your primary goal or your focus goal. It can probably be one of those three to four other remaining goals that you set. Because you're not going to spend an hour and a half getting organized every single day unless you're just in a bad rut situation. What instead, let's say in this example, your primary focus goal is to master Facebook ads. So what you would wanna do in this scenario is carve out an hour to an hour and a half every single day, let's say five days a week, where you focus on taking a class all about Facebook ads and retargeting your audience. If you do that, let's say you do that for a month, probably won't take you a month, but it depends on how long the course is. Within that month, you will have mastered or at least gotten started and made progress mastering Facebook ads because you've carved out that time. Whereas with getting organized on your inventory, maybe you spend an hour on that per week. And then you spend 10 minutes a day on Pinterest marketing. And then you have your two other goals that you set aside either an hour a week or 10 minutes a day, whatever it is for you. So that's just a way to look at it. Now, a lot of people recommend SMART goals, and I won't harp on them. I will share some information about them here. They are very helpful for accomplishing goals. There's a lot of research on them. But I do wanna share another recommendation I have for actually making progress on these goals and getting started. And going back to what I was saying about becoming more balanced in my own life. In order to do that, I want to get more organized 
within my businesses, within my projects, and within my own personal life. So I've been reading a lot of books about being productive, being efficient, getting a lot of stuff done at a time. So what I recommend, and this is from a book called Getting Things Done, The Stress-Free Art of Productivity, written by David Allen. And what David recommends is that when you come up with either a goal or a project or just anything on your to-do list, you should not only write it down and capture it, but you should also then list two things. One is the first step or the first action you need to take to make progress on it. And then the second thing is what it means to actually have that task done. So in the example of Facebook ads, let's say the goal is to master Facebook ads. Step one is to research Facebook ad courses on Google for e-commerce. That's going to be step one. And then what it looks like to actually have this goal done is to, let's say, make 25 sales from your advertisement campaign. Now the reason we want to do this is because it's easy to write down a to-do list, but what most people don't do is think about how to actually accomplish that task or that project or that item or that goal. It's easy to write it down, but we then have to go a step further and just write down what the next step is and how to achieve it and understand what the end goal is, what the end result is. And then from there, when it comes time to think about where you should focus your energy and your attention, you'll already know what to do because you've already thought about it. This is something that a lot of people skip and it's why we all get stuck because we don't know where to start. So that's it for today's video. Make sure you comment down below and share what your goals are for 2021 so we can all check them out. I'd love to see what you're thinking. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you gained some insight on some ideas for what types of goals to set and how to actually accomplish them so you don't feel so lost when it's time to get started. If you did, make sure you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.